So we have a question from one of our beautiful uh, followers on this Facebook. And uh, the question is, how do we change the tyranny, stop the tyranny? Or do we? Do we just hold space and smile? I think maybe some days, but not every day. Keeping the fear and chaos alive by feeding it. Do we embrace the demons or do we fight the demons? And this is a very interesting question because uh, many people are in confusion about the, about exactly this type of uh, this type of situation. Not only are they in confusion, but they are also in this state of helplessness, where uh, what can I do? What can I do? I can do nothing. I am one person. And uh, for us, it comes back always to the idea or the concept of energy. Everything, everything is energy. If you think about everything like energy, it means that it's not physical, it's not necessarily tangible, uh, it's not something that you can uh, necessarily plan out and work through like a business plan. It's something that is within us and without us and of us. So that means that we are absolutely connected, if we, cho if we choose to be, to energy because we are energy. So if you think about it like that, when you see all of these terrible things that governments do, that corporations do, that banks do, that people do to each other, and we are talking of these things that affect hundreds of thousands of people, not the neighbor being upset with the other neighbor and causing problems. We are talking of these really large uh, government uh, situations where people are money is being held back for, from health care and they are not being able to uh, access basic basic health care because of the cost. We're talking this type of thing. We're talking where taxes are so high that people can't even afford to pay their rent because their wages are so low, their taxes are so high, and they can't afford their rent, they can't afford to pay for food. This is what we're talking about. These are really big things. When you look at those things on an energetic level, as an energetic concept, you can see that if you really looked at it and you looked at that, let's look at healthcare, right? Well, you've got the situation where people uh, have in wealthy countries do not have access to healthcare that is either free or affordable and of a good quality. If you looked at that and looked at it as an energetic ball, you would see it as this big, dense mass of like crawling worms. Every single person, everything that's involved in it, trying to grab, trying to keep it for themselves, trying to dive in and burrow into places that are uh, that they want to get to to make the, the have the power and the money and what have you, and it's dense and it's ugly and it's not uh, it's tight so if you look at it like that and that's how you see it what can you do to that to make it different if you invest energy that's the same as that anger grabbing uh, forceful distress resentment then if you match it like that then you are just going to add to it you are adding your precious beautiful energy to that you are adding and giving away your sovereignty your power your beauty and your light to that if, on the other hand, you look at that and you say, that's not what I want to be a part of. I don't want to be a part of that. Some people would say, send light. Send light to that. Well, yes, you can send light to that. And you might be lucky uh, if you are one or two people and, and put enough light in there to, to change the whole whole concept, the whole uh, sphere of that energy. 
what we would suggest is that you look at that and you see what is there. And then you look at yourself and you see in yourself either the similarity or the difference in the energy that you have. And what we are talking about is your feelings about it, your feelings towards it, your thoughts and your uh, about it and towards it, your actions, the physical way that you deal with it, looking at all of those things and the energy that you are placing in those things regarding and relating to the sphere, this energy sphere of this one thing. And see how you are actually entertaining if you like, or feeding that energy in just in the way that you are, right? And you look at that, and then you look at how you are not entertaining it. You're not uh, on the same wavelength. You're not being the same energy as that. And as you're doing that, what you're wanting to do is to take to change the energy that is similar to that, to the energy that is not similar to that. So what we're saying is you're not working on that energy. You're working on yourself. Not the energy, that big mass of writhing worms that's dense and sticky and nasty. No, you're working on yourself. Because at the end of the day, the only being that you can work on, that you can change, that you can develop, that you can love unconditionally, that you can send light to and what have you, or expose the light of this, is you. Is you. Because you are the only one that you have complete power and sovereignty over. And Listen to what we just said. You are the only one that you have complete power and sovereignty over. That mass of ball, that sphere that we're talking about with the worms and the nasty, that is trying to have power and sovereignty over you and others like you. But it doesn't actually have that power. It only has the power to do that for itself. So... If you think about it like that, as soon as you make that decision, you really understand that and you start to work on yourself, not engaging in that environment, not engaging in that activity, and really looking at yourself and saying, I am sovereign, I am the one that has the power over me. What happens if everybody could start to do this is that the power of that writhing worm mess would start to diminish because it would be put on notice. Actually, you don't have the power over me. I have the power over me. I don't have any power over you either, and I'm not going to even try it. I'm not going to try and force my will on you. I'm not going to try and make you do something else by shining my light or, or going through back doors and trying to change things and what have you. I'm not going to. I'm going to work on me. Now, by doing this, however, it's, a long, it's the long path, the long path. Because what we are asking is that people work on themselves and in that way taking the energy back from whatever that is and giving themselves the power and the sovereignty and not allowing that energy over there, the sphere, the wormy sphere, to have power and sovereignty over you. This is the long haul because working on the self is a very time-consuming activity and takes a long time. There will be those that say, well, we, no, we must, um, we must protest and we must be activists and this. Go right ahead. You can do that, absolutely. And that might be the shorter path. No doubt, might be the shorter path and might get action done. But if you look around the world, when people have done that throughout history, it may change things for a short period of time, but it does not change things for the long haul. It changes them for the short haul. There are short victories. There are small victories. They might look big. People overthrow a country. They put a new government in. Well, very soon you can see that that government 
they might be alright, but the next one that comes along and the next, it just reverts back. Because the energy, that sphere of writhing worms, that dense, nasty energy, has never actually been dealt with by saying, you don't have the power over me, I have the power over me, I am sovereign. That's why we say this is the long haul journey. So it's up to you. You can take, be part of the short haul journey and be activists and transfer your light and your anger and whatever it is to that to, to tell them how angry you are about the situation. Or you can look at it and say, okay, how am I like it? How am I different? I'm going to take my different energy and I'm going to infuse what I, the like energy with my different energy and I'm going to pull myself away from their, soul, their power and their taking of my sovereignty. I'm going to give that back to myself. I'm going to create it for myself. And as you do that, if you can guide other people to do that, the more and more and more and more people that can do that, the energy will slowly very slowly, but it will dissipate. So you have to think. You have to think. Am I here for the long haul or the short haul? If you are here for the long haul, you have to understand that you may leave this life before you actually see the long haul vision. Outcome has results. No, what is that? Realized. But if you've done enough work and you've done enough work to show other people, to pass that message on, then the long haul is still going to be going after you've left. But that's that's the decision that you have to make. Long haul, knowing that you may not see the realization of your dream, or short haul, and yes, of course, see it. Be there for it. But never be really sure that that's going to stick and that the generations that come after you are going to be experiencing the new, which you've just created with your activism, or the old, because the energy may never have been released. So that is our answer to that question. We hope that you have found something in the answer. And what we would like to say is, whichever course you take, both of them are exciting adventures into the world, humanity, existence, and the self. So whichever one you decide to take, we would just urge you to look at it like that. This is an adventure. This is exciting. And, by the way, the world or humanity needs both groups of people. We need the activists and we for the short haul so that they can start to energize and keep the energy going for the people who are on the long haul. But we really need some long haulers. We've got lots of short haulers in humanity. We need the long haulers. So we hope that some of you choose for the long haul. Many blessings to you and thank you so much. Mm -hmm.